Um, you're both, well, you both have been active since the tragedy occurred to each of you um, in terms of what you're doing. How can people be involved? How can people help? What would you like to say to those who may be watching us today? Kenny, let me, let me give it to you first. Well, you have to know that if it's not happening in your house, God bless you. Uh, but it could be happening two or three down, three doors down. And we say, don't judge. Empathy is the, uh, the highest form of knowledge because it comes without judgment. So don't believe with someone struggling, oh, they're, they're just an addict. No, the chemical receptors have changed in their brain and maybe they took something that was beyond their control and now they can't get it back. And, you know, our frontal lobes of our brains aren't fully, fully formed. They'll tell you that you're 25 or 26. Jamie passed at 23. Unfortunately, within five days, he was addicted. Didn't know. He didn't wake up one morning and say, I want to screw up the rest of my life. So following Scott's lead, um, we're attempting still to do and, and he found those road those uh, roadblocks and as he said those you know in the area and re residential areas NIMBY factor not in my backyard they don't want it because there's this perception of what an addict is so we're trying to change that we've given four hundred thousand dollars now in grants to Michigan colleges where recovery programs we play pay for the recovery coaches uh sober living in the dorms so we do that seven Michigan colleges now we'd love to go statewide and we're trying to build the Jamie Daniels Recovery Center and to keep tabs on what we're doing, jamiedanielsrecovery.org. I originally followed Scott's lead with his uh, hockey night in Winnipeg and Arlen and I went out to see what he was doing and it was marvelous and what Darcy did and that that card trick that he did and, and a tribute uh, to Bruce was unbelievable, Scott. So we're attempting to do what Scott has done so successfully as well in light of the other things that we're doing with, with Michigan colleges here and, and just spreading the word. So jamiedanielsfoundation.org, you can help there. And we, we put on a roast most years and John Shannon's help and, and doing live events. That's, that's how we're, we're raising funds. I would say, Bob, that um, the first thing people should realize is that addiction is a disease. Um, the medical definition of it is it's the chronic brain disorder. Yes, it's a horror disease. Addicts often die ugly deaths, often alone. That's what happened to our son, but it is a disease and we have to be able to speak about it as such. Um, it is probably addiction and substance abuse, the single greatest peacetime problem that um, our country and the U.S. as well has ever faced. When you consider that 21 Canadians in the year 2021 were dying of of opioid overdoses every day. There were 400 deaths in Manitoba. I mean, there's a, a ton of figures that I could quote that support the notion that it is the single greatest peacetime problem we've ever faced, but it's enough to know that uh, we need to do better. And we're proud of the Bruce Oak Recovery Center. Um, it took us uh, well, 10 years, but I guess actively, uh, we started making progress about four or five years ago when we got the place built. Uh, it's a 50-bed long-term recovery facility that is always full. It's got a waiting list of, um, of 200, an active list of about 90. The active list meaning those are the guys who phone every day, probably for a couple of months, if not longer, in an effort to get into Bruce Oak so they can get their lives back, they can get healthy again. So when people realize the depth of addiction and that you don't have to shake a family tree too hard to get an addict or an alcoholic to fall out as Ken says, if it's not in your house, it's probably somewhere in your family, uh, you'll know someone who's suffering from it. Uh, so um, let's, let's be better than to assign blame to addicts, to judge them. Let's, uh, let's realize that, uh, that people need help. They, they need treatment. That's the only way out of this crisis that we're in right now is treatment because that's the way that addicts or those who suffer from substance abuse get their lives back and once again become functioning members of society. We're proud to be able to do our part, but I'm not saying that everyone should do what Ken and I have done, which is run out and try to raise 15 or $16 million to get a place built. But uh, let's, let's be aware of the problem and let's speak about it appropriately. And can I just add one thing that, that and, and from an American standpoint, 90% of over 20 million Americans who are struggling with substance use disorder started using some form of pill or something else before their 18th birthday. And if you have medication in your home, don't 
don't flush it down the toilet. It's not the way to do it because it does affect the waters. It does affect the fish and everything else. Big problem in Lake Superior here in Michigan. So please dispose of it properly because you don't know there could be a teenager coming to your house and we're visiting grandpa and he's got something from knee surgery or shoulder mm -hmm. surgery 10 years ago that's sitting there and that's how easy it can start. Please dispose of the medications properly from your home. Don't leave old medications lying around. Mm -hmm.